Hey guys, Stella Stare here. I've got a new cool, exciting video for you guys today. So I've gone ahead and made a change to my setup. You've seen my setup before. It's a custom built desktop with a dual monitor setup, pictured there, right? But I'm gonna be traveling soon to go home for Christmas for a couple weeks in December. And so I wanted something that I could play games on and bring. So I went ahead and picked up an Alienware M15 R3 gaming laptop. For as long as I could remember, since I was a teenager, I've wanted to own an Alienware. Whether it was a desktop or a laptop, I've followed them, and I've waited until the time was right. And I think that's now. So I went ahead and bought a laptop. I'm going to go ahead and give you an amateur's review, right? This is nothing in-depth. If you're looking for a super technical comparison, performance, etc., go look at one of those guys that does this every day for a living and has tons of products to review. I don't, and I'm working with what I got. I'm going to tell you what I think about it day one out of the box, some things that I've noticed I've heard mentioned in other reviewers content, but didn't realize to what scale. I'm going to try to make that applicable to you today. So starting off, I'll read the specs. I went ahead and picked up the version that has the 10th generation Intel Core i7, Windows 10, Nvidia GeForce RTX 2070 eight gigabytes super. That was the seller for me. 16 gigabytes of DDR4. Now granted, that is soldered on to the system board, so you can't upgrade it on your own. If you want to upgrade it to the 32 gigabyte version, you're going to have to configure that and order it from Dell or buy a model that has it. I went ahead and got the 512 gigabyte SSD, but you can get a one terabyte. I got the dark side of the moon finish, but you can get the lunar light, and I think that's the more popular. However, I wanted the dark one. I've got a white setup already, white desktop, um, white keyboard, mouse, headphones, things like that. I wanted to go with something a little bit more sleek in my opinion. And what I've noticed with my setup, I love my Razer keyboard, my mouse, and my headphone, and my case. However, it gets so dirty. I have to clean this thing with an alcohol swab like every other month to get the dirt sponges off of it. A laptop, I'm gonna be using it a lot. It's gonna be all over the place with me. It's gonna pick up dirt. So starting off, here's the laptop itself. See the front the back, sides. Horrible camera action, I'm sorry. All right, you've got these giant exhaust ports on the back. Although this is an Ultrabook, it's still a little bit heavy, and I think that's due to the vapor cooling system they've included for the CPU inside. These exhaust ports on the back are massive, and they add about an extra inch to an inch and a half of size and length to the laptop. It's got a nice dark finish on the top. The white is nice and clear as well. I've seen that one at Best Buy. I've never Never owned it, but I've seen it. It's got a nice plastic, all right? That's the difference between this and a Razer. The Razer's built out of aluminum, like a Mac. It's a super nice, high-quality build. Even though that this is plastic, it doesn't degrade from the durability and the quality of the materials used for the build. It's got a great feel to it, all right? It's nice, strong. I don't think I'm going to have any problems with this thing lasting a long time. That's pretty much it. All right, the other thing I want to notice, if you want to talk about ports and things like that, go look at the specs, right? You can see that. So we talked about the exhaust ports on the back. We've got two on each side, two total, one per side, and then the honeycomb grill on the bottom as well as on the inside. We'll get to that when we open the laptop up. All right, you've got some cool RBG lighting. I think it's RGB around the exhaust ports in the back. And then as Alienware's kind of hallmark, is their alien head on the cover lighting up as well. And you can customize all of that with the included software. All right, let me talk about how I got this. I think that's worth noting and it's part of the reason I wanted to make this video. This, video, this laptop retails on Dell for $2,209 with the one terabyte option. At Best Buy, the option with the 512 gigabyte SSD is retailing for 2,099. That's expensive. That's not what I was willing to pay for a laptop. Even though it is a premium laptop and if it's worth it to you and you have the funds, go ahead. However, I still wanted a high quality laptop, particularly this laptop, but I wasn't gonna pay the high premium. So I waited. Fortunately for us, it's the holiday season. We've got Black Friday deals, Christmas deals, random specials, things like that. Keep your eye open. You don't need to pull the trigger the day you decide to want a laptop. Just look around. So I originally saw this option on the Dell Outlet website, great option. I'm gonna put a link in the description. If you haven't heard of Dell Outlet, they sell high quality refurbished products, usually open box for hugely discounted prices. Sometimes they have deals on brand new laptops. So check it out, all right? They have great deals. I originally saw this listed for $1,500. 
and I was all about it. I decided to look on Best Buy just to see, and I saw that it was also selling for $1,500. That wasn't going to make the difference for me. I was going to order directly from Dow Outlet. However, scroll a little bit down the page on Best Buy, and I saw an open box version for $1,300. That's saving $750 off of the retail price tag. So I went ahead and took a look at the open box options. The $13 option was open box recertified and just shipped as is. Great. I think I would have had great success with that and no issues. However, for $1,350, there was an open box, Geek Squad certified, refurbished, professionally cleaned with original packaging. I love packaging, right? So I wanted the original packaging and the fact that it was professionally cleaned, being a maintainer myself, I knew how valuable that is. So I went ahead and opted for the $1,350 option. I still saved $750. So I implore you to do your research and look around. $750 I was able to save getting the same premium and quality laptop that I would have from Dell Direct or Best Buy had I not seen or taken advantage of the sales. Look around. All right, opening it up. First thing you'll notice, RGB keyboard comes on. Give it a second, the laptop powers itself on. That's like a super small feature, but pretty cool that this thing knows that when you open it, it's gonna power on. Also, talking about powering on, I've been talking for maybe three seconds and this thing went from dead shut down to awake and ready to use in less than three seconds. Granted, it's got that SSD soldered directly onto the motherboard with expandable options, note, but it's super high performing. Really pleased with that. Looking on the inside here, like I've mentioned before, we have our alien head power button. It's currently orange and that's because I'm running on battery power, okay? You can configure that in the settings, but I like it. It's just a neat reminder, not necessary, neat. At the top of the keyboard here, you've got another honeycomb, honeycomb vent grill system. On the left and right side, we're gonna pull cool air into the system, and in the middle, we're going to exhaust heat. As the sides as well, exhaust heat and the rear exhaust ports. We're gonna talk about that later. The keyboard is a really nice layout, okay? The only thing that I don't love about it is that my function keys are smaller. They're about half the size of a normal key. To most people, that's not going to matter. I play World of Warcraft a lot, and I use my function keys. And it's a little bit weird and awkward having half-sized keys to press. But I think that was made at the sacrifice of having a keypad here, an arrow keypad, that's offset and full-sized. Razer doesn't do that, okay? They integrate it into a rectangular, um, symmetrical keyboard. I don't use these keys to play World of Warcraft, but other games I do, and I think that's invaluable. So that's a huge plus for me. The keyboard itself, super nice. You'll hear reviewers talk about this all the time, how good of a job Dell did with their third generation keyboard. I may be incorrect here, find out for yourself, but the second generation and first generation keyboards weren't nearly as nice, for sure the first generation. So the upgrade on the keyboard, really nice key depth, and nice solid feeling keys, great. Couldn't be happier. Go ahead and log it in here before it puts itself to sleep. Um, you'll see the Alienware desktop. One more thing I want to talk about with the build of the laptop here. Uh, the hinge, very impressed. You'll see some gaming laptops, specifically Asus I've seen it on, they have thin hinges. Never in my life have I seen a computer that has thin hinges or one small centered hinge do well. I almost always see them break, especially with a laptop that made, is made out of plastic, okay? I'm not saying anything against them. It might be a great design for what they've come up with. In the past, I haven't seen much success with them, and I don't think the durability is great. I think opting for a single large hinge like this on Dell's part, phenomenal move. I don't think we're going to have any issues with it. The trackpad. It's a glass trackpad, which is an upgrade from most conventional laptops. I think it's great. I owned a Dell Latitude before this. It's a good laptop, great trackpad, but not nearly as nice as a glass trackpad on this Alienware. That being said, I've heard from other reviewers that it's not as good as the Razer and certainly not as good as a Mac. Some people also complain about the clip. Here it is. Don't even know if you can pick that up because it's not that loud. It's a Dell laptop and it's going to have a loud click. I've never seen a Dell laptop that doesn't have a loud click. If that really upsets you, I don't know why you're using a trackpad with a gaming laptop anyways. Gonna leave that there. All right. Some things I want you to know that 
is the reason I'm making this video, right? Right now, it's a pretty quiet laptop. You really can't hear it. I'm gonna try to get you a little closer here so that you can hear what happens when I boot up a game. Actually, first we're gonna talk about the command center. Some things I want you to know. Let's talk about the Alienware Command Center. Preloaded onto the system. You can see I've got World of Warcraft already loaded into the games library. This is where I can affect everything I want. I got my games library, my FX, which is, allows me to control the lighting on the keyboard, the alien head, both on the cover and the power button, and the RGB uh, ring around the exhaust ports. Works really well. I use Razer Synops for all of my other products, my keyboard, my mouse, my headphones, etc. Um, I think this works pretty well. It's not Synops. Synops is phenomenal, right? Razer's done a really good job offering cool lighting effects at the touch of a button. Alienware has their own preset lighting effects, but they're not as good as Razer's. I'm just going to say that. That's my own opinion as a reviewer. However, it works perfectly fine, right? You could make your own effects with the Alienware software. So it's like a null, right? If you're into that sort of thing and you want to take the time to make your own effects, you've got plenty of capability with the Alienware command software to do it. Another thing I really liked about the software, the first time I booted and opened the software up, it prompted me to register with Alienware and that also started and, and registered my product in Alienware's warranty system. That's a pain in the butt usually to go ahead and register your product with the company. It's usually a separate link outside of any preloaded software that you have to uh, execute yourself. I never do that. I should, but I just don't. And then it bites me later. So the fact that Alienware just went ahead and put it into their software pre-built, it was painless. Happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and start up a game. That's what I wanna show you. This is the main reason I'm making this video, right? I'm gonna try to get you a good audible hearing, but you can hear it right now, or you can't. And that's because I'm just running in an ultrabook mode, right? I'm using it for web surfing at this point. I just booted up, it hasn't been taxed. However, this thing is loud. Go ahead and start up a game. Do you hear that? That is incredibly loud. I had heard other reviewers talk about how loud it gets. However, until I actually experienced it myself, it's insane. It's unlike any laptop I've ever used before. Granted, I've never owned a gaming laptop. So if you've owned gaming laptops and know what to expect, this isn't for you. You can hear it like, look at it, it's crazy. This is World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft, in my opinion, not that intensive of a game. Granted, it's just a gaming profile, and so it bumped it up automatically, right? And so that's why it's running hot. I don't think I'm going to have any issues with this thing running hot. Let me rephrase that. But it's going to start cooling the system in a gaming manner to ensure that I've got a cool system. I've heard it works phenomenally. The Vapor Cool system as well in, in particular. However, that's loud, guys. I mean... I'm a helicopter pilot, or sort of, getting there, and my friends are going to roast me for that. But I don't care. I'm a helicopter pilot, and I start aircraft, like, every day, and that thing is loud. <laughs> I mean, like, you just wouldn't think. It, it literally sounded like I'm starting a mini version of an aircraft starting this thing up. And, and that is so dramatic, I get it, but it's loud. And it's loud the entire time I'm playing games. And here's the other thing. Not only is it loud, it's hot. The air coming out of this thing is warm, all right? I'm not gonna say that that's gonna affect the performance because I don't know if it is. I could look, but it's warm, especially right here on the top, on the sides, and in the back. Here are some things. Why is that important? You're playing with your hands right here, right? It's gonna be warm. It just creates some warm circulating air here. On the right side or your left side, depending on which dominant hand you use, that's where your mouse is. Your hand's going to get warm. Where do most people put the power brick when they're plugged in and playing games? Behind the laptop. You know what also gets hot? That power brick. You know what you don't want to be adding heat to? That power brick. Super easy fix. Move the power brick. But these are things that you got to think about as you're using this laptop because it's blowing pretty warm air out of the back. All right, that's my rant on how loud and warm this thing gets. 
Everything other than that, I absolutely love this laptop. Beautiful 144 hertz display, upgradable to 300 if I'm not wrong. Um, great speakers. Some people don't like the speakers. It's got forward mounted front firing speakers and bottom mounted downward firing speakers. That adds a little bit of depth and I thought it was pretty loud, especially compared to most laptops. I've heard it's not as good as the MacBook, but like Mac's untouchable. What are you gonna do? Um, for a gaming laptop, I think it's phenomenal. Okay, as you can see, I've exited out of the game. It's still pretty loud. It's winding down, but it takes a second. It's definitely not immediate. Just keep that in mind. One of the last things I wanna talk about. This thing. This is a brick, you guys. I mean, I think it is literally to scale the size of a flat brick that you would use to build a house. It is huge and it gets pretty warm. I've heard that Dell makes an upgradable, nicer, curved, smaller, slimmer power brick. Literally everything I just said is better than that thing that they shipped me. Um, I guess you gotta buy it separately. I don't think it's necessary. That thing's gonna work just fine, but it's pretty massive, something to keep in mind. It would be nice if they shipped it by itself. Speaking of power, this thing to perform well, especially playing high intensity games, you're going to need to run it on power. It's got reduced capability when running on battery. That's no secret. I've heard from other reviewers that they can get about 90 minutes, an hour and a half, on a large battery, just surfing the internet or doing office word processing functions. I don't even want to know what it would keep up with a game. I mean, I'm a fourth of the way gone and I've been running it for maybe 10 minutes and I had World of Warcraft open, not even being played. Just something to keep in mind, all right guys? Other than that, I love this thing. I think it was a great purchase. I'm excited to finally own an Alienware and uh, that's about it. If you have any questions, just go ahead and drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. I'm wearing my Sterless There merch shirt, one of six made, highly exclusive. And that's only because my friends were the only ones willing to buy them after I talked them into it. So I don't even know if that counts. Um, thanks for joining me, guys. I know this wasn't a super technical or in-depth review, but it's an Alienware M15 R3. I love it. I think it's cool. I did a lot of debate over buying this one versus a Razer. The Razers weren't coming down on their premiums from what I saw. Not enough, not nearly as much as I was able to pick up this Alienware for. And while the Razer's super nice, they don't have the performance, in my opinion and from what I've heard, as the Alienware. And a lot of that has to do with the capabilities that Dell gives you right off the bat with their command center, able to overclock the GPU and the CPU, as well as undervolting them both. So I think that's a really great feature that you're gonna find with an Alienware that you won't be able to find with the Razer, and that's due to the Razer size. If you're looking for something sleek, not very in-your-face RGB lighting like this one's got, the Razer's a great product for you. But because of its slim size, it's not able to incorporate the cooling that it needs to provide those other capabilities, something huge to keep in mind. Even if you don't fully understand it, like myself, that's pretty layman's turn what it means, okay? Another reason that I'm gonna get, go ahead and pitch an Alienware, paying that premium versus Dell's G line of gaming or any other line of gaming, like you'll see from Asus or Acer, things like that. These manufacturers like to preload a lot of software onto their laptops, antivirus, um, random marketing programs. It's kind of ridiculous, especially like a Dell out of the box. This might've changed in the last five years since I've really been working with them. However, it was definitely the case when I was around them a lot. That preloaded software drastically slows your computer and fills up your hard drive right off the bat. And that's a pain. And a lot of those programs you can't get rid of because they're embedded into the system, not just an uninstalled program, right? So keep that in mind. When you buy an Alienware, they know what you're using it for. They know you're paying the premium for it and they wanna give you what you're paying for. And I think they've done a really good job with this laptop. Keep that in mind. Look for those holiday deals as you enter into the season and you're excited to buy a laptop. Don't pull trigger day one. Go ahead and do some research, find a good deal, and enjoy what you've bought without paying the ridiculous premiums that are being asked. Ridiculous, worth it, synonymous. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Stellis there.